You're listening to a Brooklyn Nets episode of the Jacob Falk Show. He's breaking down the team's latest goings on as only he can. Follow him on Twitter at Real Jacob Falk. Here he is, Jacob Falk. episode here on the Jacob Volk Show. I am Jacob Volk. And all is good in Brooklyn. James Harden is a net. You saw him in those baby blue jerseys. He changed his Twitter pictures. What you saw on Saturday wasn't a mirage. Kyrie Irving's gonna come back this week. It looked like he was gonna come back tonight. That's not gonna happen. He will be back this week, though. Kevin Durant just won Eastern Conference Player of the Week. I love that that's the third thing I'm mentioning. A guy winning Eastern Conference Player of the Week. My buddy Jim said this to me. You know, everyone's talking about James Harden and Kyrie Irving. Everyone forgot about Kevin Durant. The guy dropped 42 on Saturday. Not wrong. You've got Joe Harris playing great. Jeff Green playing great. The bench is rounding into form. All is right in Brooklyn. What I really want to talk about today is how the Nets' offense is going to work now with James Harden in the fold. And as strange as this sounds, it may be better to put the ball in Harden's hands more than Kyrie. Watching Harden on Saturday, I was stunned at some of his passes. Those were passes that very few players in the NBA can make. Kyrie can't make those passes. It may be best to run some plays with James Harden driving the ball to the hoop. He draws the double. You work it around the perimeter. Kyrie Irving, wide open three. James Harden and Kevin Durant pick and rolls. Those are going to be lethal. I think you could also see some cherry-picking plays. I think you're going to see DeAndre Jordan try to crash the boards for the rebound. Maybe Durant also. But definitely Jordan. You get the ball to Harden at half court. Harden finds the wide-open shooter. Easy money. I mean, you've got to let Kyrie have the ball in his hands, and you've got to let Durant have the ball in his hands. But it wouldn't surprise me if Harden became the primary ball handler. And I don't think Kyrie would mind that. That would open up more wide-open looks for him. I mean, you've got Harden and Durant pick and rolls. DeAndre Jordan in the low post. Look who's on the perimeter. Kyrie Irving and Joe Harris. Two of the best three-point shooters in the NBA today. And speaking of Kyrie Irving, he just bought George Floyd's family a house. That's according to Stephen Jackson, who was very good friends with George Floyd. So you know what? This is going to sound like I'm making a joke, but I'm really not. If Kyrie Irving says to everyone, this is why I was out, I was going house hunting, 
And I wanted to dot all the I's and cross all the T's. It's a weird answer. But it's sort of kind of understandable. He can say I was motivated to do good. Because of what happened at the Capitol building. There was so much evil that day. So I wanted to do some good. I wanted to buy George Floyd's family a house. But I wanted to do it the right way. It's a bizarre reason. It's a reason that would get a lot of people talking. But I don't think I'd hate it. And it's very easy if someone calls out Kyrie because of it to say... You don't think I should have bought him a house? Just go back to that over and over again. I do want to talk about the bench a little bit. Like I said, they have really rounded into form. You're going to see a lot of these guys get wide open looks now because everyone's going to be focusing on Harden. Landry Shamit got a couple wide open looks. TLC got a couple wide open looks. Bruce Brown got a couple wide open looks. Reggie Perry played well. 12 minutes, 4 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 1 block. Solid defense. With Nick Claxton out until God knows when, Perry has the opportunity to lock up the backup center job. Think about this bench when everyone comes back. Brown, Shamit, TLC, Green, and Perry. That's a solid bench. And they're all going to benefit from all the attention that's going to get paid to Durant, Harden, and Irving. On any given night, Shamit, TLC, and Green can go off. They're microwaves. Bruce Brown is a solid defender. He'll always get his. Reggie Perry, turning into a decent player. He's proving why I raved about him. The day after... The NBA draft. You want to tell me, oh, Harden had nine turnovers. He only shot three for ten from beyond the arc. Durant had six turnovers. Jordan was terrible. Blah, blah, blah. It was James Harden's first game with his new team. He didn't have the benefit of a practice, and he put up a triple-double. Kevin Durant dropped 42 points. I can live with six turnovers. And I can live with nine turnovers if you get a triple-double. I mean, the Jordan thing was a little concerning, but Nikola Vujovic is going to be a tough matchup for him. And any center who can stretch the floor is going to be a tough matchup for him. He's not a good perimeter defender. I've never said that he's a good perimeter defender. Tonight, he's going to go up against Brooke Lopez. That's a tough matchup for him. But you know what? On Wednesday, he's going to go up against Andre Drummond. He may go up against Jared Allen. He'll be fine against those guys. It's just the stretch fives that give him some difficulty. That's where Jeff Green comes into play. That's where Kevin Durant comes into play. That's where a guy like Michael Kidd Gilchrist could come into play if the Nets sign him. Or Dwayne Dedman if the Nets sign him. I've seen his name mentioned a lot. That would make sense. Guys, the Nets are fine. In fact, they're more than fine. You saw on Saturday how dominant they can be. They shot 54% from the field. 46% from beyond the arc. 88% from the 
from the charity stripe. When Kyrie comes back, they're going to have one of the most lethal offenses in NBA history. And he's going to come back soon. Okay, he just is. In fact, something tells me he could come back tonight. But the Nets want to hold him back to make sure his conditioning is at 100%. You know what? That's fine. We've waited this long. We can wait a little longer. Also, the stuff about Harden not being a good defender. The guy had four steals on Saturday. And in some cases, he was matched up with Vujovic. And you know what? Harden held his own. Harden's a strong guy. He looked trim. He looked muscular. Everyone was concerned about his weight. He's fine. I don't know what happened. But he took off all that weight very quickly. Harden's a better defender than some people said he was. And you know what? He's a much better passer, too. He made my decision to buy a t-shirt look like a very smart one. I'm not kidding. I bought a t-shirt of his. Can't let important things like that wait until the last minute. All in all, you saw how dominant they can be on Saturday. And I really think they're going to do that consistently. This is going to be a big test for him against the Bucks. Let's see how Durant handles Giannis. Let's see how Harden handles Holiday. Let's see how Harris handles Middleton. It's going to be a big test, but the Nets can win it. New York Islanders show comes your way next week. Brooklyn Nets show comes your way the week after. Regular episodes of the Jacob Volk show come your way Every weekday afternoon. Until next time. I am Jacob Volk saying. Happy Martin Luther King Day.